Um, the final example I'll give is the Stop Murder Music campaign, which was again by outrage about 10 or 15 years ago. This is a campaign against the eight Jamaican reggae and dancehall singers like Buja Banton, Elephant Man, Vibes Cartel, who put out records openly advocating the killing of LGBT people. Variously saying that gay people should be shot, hanged, burned, and drowned. These records were direct incitements to murder. Those records are being played on the BBC and other radio stations in this country. Even though incitement to murder is a very serious criminal offence. And it led to a spike in attacks upon LGBT people, especially black LGBT people, who were being attacked by other black young kids, mostly men, who had been listening to and incited, legitimated and encouraged by this music. So we were approached by the Jamaican LGBT group JFLAG, who asked us to try and do a campaign against this murder music. Because in Jamaica, it also led to a huge spike in homophobic, biphobic, and transphobic assaults, and murders, and murders. Um, they said, this music is killing us. We can't do the campaign here, because if we speak out and are identified, we'll be killed too. And around this time, one of the leading Jamaican LGBT activists, Brian Wilts Williamson, had been murdered in his own home by a homophobic gang, or presumed homophobic gang. He was stabbed, I think, 70 times. Not the kind of wounds you would expect from a, a robbery based on murder. This was a frenzied attack, consistent with a hate crime. So we agreed that we would do this campaign. Lots of other LGBT organisations were asked, but they all refused. Because they feared what we knew might happen. We knew that if we took on this campaign, we'd be branded as racists. We'd be branded as neo-colonialists. We'd be branded as acting like you know, the British imperial power dictating to Jamaica. Of course, that was not our mentality at all. We were doing this campaign to support LGBT Jamaicans at their request, to stand in solidarity with them against singers who were advocating their murder. And sure enough, our fears were boring, did come true. We were denounced by many in the black community as racist for saying that it's wrong that this music incites the murder of LGBT people. They said that going against these singers was evidence of a racist colonialist mentality. The Voice newspaper leading black columnists, denounced us. Not a single black member of parliament spoke in our defence, even though they were all asked. So think about all the black MPs there are then and now. Not one of them spoke out in defence of our campaign or in defence of LGBT black people in Jamaica and in Britain. Not one of them. They all looked the other way. Our campaign initially began by trying to have a dialogue with these singers. It didn't work. They virtually told us to F off. Um, so all the attempt to, at rapprochement, of negotiating a solution, of coming to some kind of agreement, it all failed. So we decided, with the support of JFLAG in Jamaica, to initiate a campaign of economic uh, sanctions and boycotts. So we targeted all the music venues and concerts they were lined up to do to get their concerts cancelled. And we succeeded. We cancelled their concerts in Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, the United States, Canada, Australia. We cost them millions in lost revenue. <coughs> and eventually, because it hit them in the pocket, those singers did sit down and negotiate. Eventually, they stopped producing murder music because financially it wasn't worth the candle. So we'd use financial leverage 
as a way of forcing them to change, even though we knew in their hearts they probably hadn't. But the important thing was not that we'd change their minds, but we'd stop the music. And the corresponding result was that the level of anti-LGBT violence in Jamaica, in Britain, in the United States and elsewhere, dramatically decreased among those communities that were listening to that music. It didn't stop, it didn't stop, but it did dramatically reduce. I would say that we probably helped prevent many hundreds, if not more, homophobic threats and assaults as a result of that campaign. But boy, it was tough. Boy, it was tough. And the sad thing is that there were quite a lot of people on the left who went along with the idea that this was a racist campaign. They said this was an attack upon black music. It was no such thing. It was an attack upon eight specific artists who were inciting the murder of LGBT people. We weren't attacking the Jamaican artists who were not inciting the murder of LGBT people. We didn't boycott any of their concerts or denounce them. They were fine. In fact, we praised the early Jamaican reggae pioneers like Bob Marley, who spoke of one love and peace. They never resorted to this vile, homophobic murder music. But, you know, it was really, really, really tough. And even to this day, you know, in certain academic circles, they, they write papers about the racist campaign of Peter Tatchell and Outrage, trying to destroy black music specifically targeting black people because they are black. Nonsense. Their race was irrelevant. Their nationality was irrelevant. They were inciting murder. That was the only thing that motivated that campaign. And we've done similar campaigns against neo-Nazis, against white neo-Nazis, who've also incited violence or murder against LGBT people. So the idea we were singling out black people and black community was sheer fiction. But even as recently as last year, there was a horrific attack made um, against me in outrage, regurgitating this, claiming that we're racist neo-colonialists, and that no one should work with us, no one should support us. And indeed, the personal price has been very high. I used to get invited often to speak at trade union conferences. Many of them no longer invite me, for various reasons, but one of them being because it's been put out there that I'm a racist, and this campaign was a racist campaign. 